Ooh. Light. What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. This video is going to be about this machine right here. So I recently had an idea. It was actually not an idea. It was more of how can I do this better? So I had a prop that I had on a quite large plane. This is a big prop, as you can tell. And I broke it. And I thought to myself, well, these are about, I don't know, the cheapest one I found was like 30 bucks. You might be able to find them on the right day. But the ones I found were not cheap. They were 30 plus for this size. This is a 22 by 10. So I decided I could probably make one of these. So I decided to make a duplicator. So there's a really cool channel out there that has one of these full scale and she makes props all the time. I'll link it in the description. It kind of what gave me some interesting insight to uh, kind of what to do here. I looked at that as an example and figured I could make my own. So that's what I decided to do. Right here is a blank. As you can see, it's still got the ends on it. It's still real rough. I have not changed anything on it or sanded it down it's right off the machine. And basically, I decided that I was going to make a prop maker, but I was going to do it over July 4th weekend. So I kind of planned it out in my head. I planned this out in my head. I wanted to make at least an 18 inch on each side prop. That's a 36 inch prop. That's pretty big. But that was my goal. So I gathered up some things over that week and kind of brought them into this space uh, and then thought about what I was going to do. And then on July 4th weekend, this last year, I decided just to go for it. Kind of had a few design parameters. One, I had to make it purely mechanical, otherwise I would have just built a CNC version of this and did away with a lot of what I did. The duplicator is exactly a duplicator. It has a master and then it cuts a secondary part from the master. So I needed a cam system and a rotating assembly, as you can see, and I wanted to basically build it with just stuff I had. I did spend $20 on this bearing right here because I needed this open space to stick the prop out the back. So that's what I did. So basically, this machine took exactly three days to build, and beyond that, the three days that I built this thing, after I confirmed that it was actually going to work the way I wanted to in those three days built from scratch, which is what you're going to watch in this video series, I decided to go ahead and add a motor driver for the motion going back and forth, but this is still on a predetermined set rotation. So that's what this video series is about. Now my design parameters said I can't use any electronics, so I didn't in this build all the way up until my test, which was okay, but not great. And then I decided I needed more precision. Now looking to the future. Um, I ended up making an app and doing some stuff and I did some software and I did some Arduino things and I did some stepper motor programming and actually all that I'll show in the later versions of this. The first version is literally the first three days. So it's a long video, long extended cut, mini series of videos. And then I got into the electronic digital stuff and now basically I would actually like to build a CNC version because I have everything I need here. I just need to control the rotation of this and then make a motor so I can control the height and basically I have a CNC version. This direction is already on a stepper motor driver and I can control it with an Arduino. So the implications of that are easy. Um, anyway, that's what this video series is about. Three days, a couple of series of videos, and then we'll get into the deep stuff which is going to be a lot more difficult. So let's get started. As a really quick overview of the machine, I have a fairly large AC, it's actually a DC motor running off an of AC bridge rectifier. Okay, so I got myself a nice bridge rectifier, runs through a digital relay, goes down here to this motor, spins that motor. Uh, that motor rotates this belt, which is tied to this section. So I have my master up here and my duplicated part down here. Now, I didn't want to buy a second bearing and spend the extra money. So I decided to just use what I had and just make it a half prop as my master because that's all I really cared about. So that's what I did. Then the mat, then the secondary I needed to stick through this hole and actually make come all the way back out so I can make this half and that half sticking out like that. 
So I had to have a bearing that was somewhat nice, that was somewhat rigid, that didn't have much play in it. And that's what I came up with. And then I 3D printed these. And then on the back side back here, I'm not sure if we can even get back there right now. There's a lot of stuff on the way. On the back side, there is a cam hooked up to a stepper motor, which drives this whole entire tray back and forth, as you can see. Moves this whole tray, and then I made some uh, uh, coverings for all that and tried to enclose this whole thing. As you can see, it's got clear poly on the front. And that way I can suck all this stuff out into a vacuum and not have this make a mess in my garage, because my number one rule in the garage is don't cut wood in the garage. Broke that rule. But anyway, angle grinder here. I spent a lot of time getting that figured out, I'll show you. And then this is just on a cam, which controls that. And literally, you just rotate this, which rotates that, and move it over and it cuts it. That's literally, it's, it's literally that simple. So anyway, that's a quick overview. Now, we'll give you the long extended cut of actually building this thing. Do you like this? Yes. You do? Yeah. Um, you know how much it cost me? I think $20. That's right! He did know! Good job. And, uh, yes. I have plans to fly some quite large planes. And that's what I'm gonna do. But I refuse to buy props. Yeah. So I'm gonna make them. Uh, yeah. That P-51 up there is going on a big prop too. And I did make a three prop, by the way. It lives on that plane. What's up everybody? Russ here, rwgresearch.com. I had this idea, and uh, I want to make props. They are quite expensive when you get up to this scale. This is a 22 by 10. Obviously that one didn't last long. Actually it lasted one flight. One and a half. Um, these are about 30 to 40, 50 dollars, 60 dollars, depending on what you buy. Pretty expensive, but they're not that hard to make. They're just really hard to like shape and then finish. So I decided to build this machine thing here. Um, this is what I come up with. It's actually the way they make big props, uh, the old school way. They have a sample in here, and there's a cam that goes up and down with a cutter on this side, a cam on this side, and the prop rotates, and they just cut and then they go along the length and cut the prop so like literally this prop is just in there and it's spinning like this and there's like a cam like this riding up and down the profile and it's moving over this way and then it's attached to another thing that's spinning and cutting you literally can just duplicate stuff now you could make a full CNC version of this and then do it digitally I think you could actually do both but it's easier if you got one just to duplicate it um, in this case, I broke both halves. I glued this one together, so I've got me a template. Um, so if I want to go bigger, I'm going to have to probably figure out a different way, which my method was download a 3D file or make one, print it out, and use the 3D print as my template. So you do one half, and then you take the wood and you flip it over so it sticks out the other side. So I bought this, um, this ring right here, okay, and uh, this is going to be my internal bearing. That's my hope for the uh, for for this one. I started cutting some work for the for the part where the good piece goes into, and then for the top because we only need a half a prop up here. Instead of purchasing another one of those big rings, they're twenty bucks, which doesn't sound like much, but I don't want to spend thirty on a prop, so twenty bucks is a lot. So I'm going to use a smaller bearing and just cut the prop off and make it you know be on this side of the bearing. So. Anyway, that's the idea, so I'm mocking up some ideas here, and then I got a, uh, an angle grinder right there, and I'm probably going to be taking that angle, angle grinder and putting a cutter like this on it, and uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to try. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what I'm trying to build here, and my build goal is to build this in a couple days. I know that's a lot of work for a couple days, but I also brought home this... Uh, this uh, uh, what is this called? Lead screw. I brought on this lead screw I took out of something a long time ago, which I might use for the slider. And then actually over here, I brought home some sliders that I took out of another machine a long time ago. And I might use these as my my holder. And then I got this 
for the frame. Um, and I got some more 80 20. What? I'm gonna put this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on Daddy, I have a big wing. Can you sit on my RC car? A ring? My wing. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Um, good luck. Anyway, that's the plan. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. See you in a few days. That's my goal. Literally, I'm going to try to get this done in a few days. And it's the weekend on July 4th. So I'm just going to spend time doing it. Cheers.